Hey, what's up, you guys? This is B Slade, and you are watching Quincy on Studio Q. Studio Q Show, and you know. I am sitting with the three-time Grammy-nominated B Slade. I mean, he's a choreographer. He is an executive producer. He is a phenomenal singer. I mean, this man wears so many hats. I mean, in all <laughs> ways. Ladies and gentlemen, B Slade in the hey. building! <laughs> Multi dab. <laughs> yes, you need like other hands for the dabs yeah, yeah, yeah. of the of the titles that you do. Well, this new album, yes. you said it's the first one that's um, uh, not based on your ability. Mm -hmm. You wanted, you know, young, the mm -hmm. old to be able to dig it. Tell me what the whole concept was. You know, it kind of happened on a song. I was actually wondering how I could, what would the next record be called? The first song from the album is called Money Up. Hey. <laughs> so are the Tam's favorites. <laughs> hey. Money up. Yeah, um, so based off of that song, I thought the album originally was gonna be called Blackopoly. Mm. Because I was just really pro black. It's not that I have anything against any other race. I just want what's good for my people first. Mm -hmm. You know? This is plain and simple. So I thought Blackopoly would be a good thing to empower, you know, black people, young black people, entrepreneurs and things like that. But I was like, no, it's actually bigger than that. It's bigger than the black community. It's 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 bigger than a race. This mm. is just about good music, period. Love That's that. not confined to ageism, sexism, and homophobia, and transphobias, and whatever else that's going on. It's just good music that everyone in every walk of life can relate to. What do I call that album then? Be Slave. Love that, love that. And why was it important for you to do this kind of album? I've time. never had a self-titled album. That's number one. Mm -hmm. And every time I've seen someone who had released a self-titled album, it was a definitive moment in their career. Mm -hmm. Like, think of the Janet album. Mm -hmm. Like, it wasn't Janet Jackson. It was just Janet, period. You know what I mean? The Brandy album. It wasn't Brandy Norwood. It was just Brandy, period. You know? Beyonce. When she dropped the Beyonce album, that was a definitive moment in that that time of her career so I feel like I feel like this this moment right now I'm moving out of image it may not seem that way but it's not so much about the image as much as it's about the music so good the collection so good you don't care mm -hmm. that's not the point mm -hmm. that's why it's just a can okay oh I was wondering I was gonna mm -hmm. ask about that you mentioned collection and yes. you said that music can be like a winter collection mm -hmm. of your thoughts mm -hmm. you know like so so what what collection would you name this? You know what? Normally, I would not re release an album like this in this time of year, but the second half of the album justifies it. And I say that because the color scheme is very spring, summer yeah. to me. You know, it's, it a, it's a more of a, a bold summertime, outdoors, beach type situation or having fun. It seems like a very active color. Mm -hmm. I chose red and yellow or ketchup and mustard intentionally because all of the brands that have affected my life and have been uh, uh, staples in my life have always contained the color schemes of uh, mustard and ketchup or red and yellow, such as McDonald's, mm -hmm. you know, red and yellow. Yeah. You know, you think of Shell Gas, red and yellow. Back in the days when Tower Records was still moving yeah, around and working here it domestically, is. it's still in Japan, but over here it's not red and yellow. Mm -hmm. You know, in and out Burgers, red and yellow, uh, uh, Arm and Hammer. Baking soda. Yeah. I've got baking soda. <laughs> Red and yellow. Uh -huh. And so those colors, um, it means stop and it means pause. It means you have to stop at this point to recognize that this brand is going to be in your household in some form or another in your life, at your job, at the club, while you get dressed, while you make love, while you, whatever it is, this brand is going to be in a household name. What does it look like? That doesn't matter. Do you know the name? I feel like this is the first B Slate album. The other ones were albums, but they were really just tests and, and testing ops, like to prepare me to create the perfect, and I say perfect in this sense, it's you can press play from top to bottom and let the whole thing roll. Mm -hmm. That's a perfect record to me. There's certain albums that you just let them play. Mm -hmm. D'Angelo's Brown Sugar, mm -hmm. you let it play. It was a short record, but you didn't need any more. That's all you needed. And I was just desiring to get like a body of work that people could enjoy. That if every black household, if I get that hood Grammy, 
then the everyone else is gonna follow. Yeah, absolutely. You know what I mean? I feel like this is a, a quintessential sing along African American just dope ass piece. It's something that black folks just gonna love. Oh, yeah. Back then, I'm sure when you were recording this album mm -hmm. or that album, mm -hmm. you were in it. You know, mm -hmm. you were in it. So I just always am curious when you know people have that that album, one, that album yeah. and they're like, no, this is very different from yeah. all of that. Mm -hmm. So I'm just saying, how did that help you evolve to here, or how do you how how do you know? Some of the songs on this album are are singles from other albums that I just said, this song is too good. Even if it's an old song, it doesn't mean it's, it's old to me, but not old to the public. Okay. And I wish that artists these days would quit dating their stuff. Like, I don't really like Throwback Thursdays as it relates to this is my old project because some people are putting up Throwback Thursday songs that they've done in the past that I just now found out about and you could tell me it's brand new and I'll go for it as a consumer. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. So. <clears throat> I try to make music that can be used at any time. Mm -hmm. Aside from me being an artist, I also have to a &R the record. That means outside of my own artistic ego and ambition, I have to, as the CEO of my label, make decisions as a &R towards the artistic side of who I am. Mm -hmm. So this was a well a &R record specifically designed for commercial audiences and radio appeal. Yeah. And it wasn't like we were trying. It's just... What That's up. what ended up happening. Yeah. I studied the market. Mm -hmm. I love the process more than the product. I'm actually a little sad that I'm not recording it and still editing, you know, the, the, the music film short because that process is, or process, is what excites me most. Well, to me, that's what makes you a real artist, enjoying the process, you know, of anything because... You know, we get so, you know what I mean? <laughs> in, the, in the final project, but like, you got to love the process to do what you do. I sat with it. I didn't rush through it, but it didn't take a long time. Mm -hmm. um, I, I'm not really singing like, singing is not the point of this album. There are moments where you hear me singing. Yeah, okay, I felt like the Slayers, self-named, they did all that. The fans, they, they there's certain moments they have to have on these records. Because mm -hmm. I'm consistent with the way I deliver quality music, but how can I make it something that they're they could be uh, happy about their friends mm. listening to. Okay. You know, if you make a good enough record, you don't even really have to push people to push it. They're going to introduce it on their own. They become the evangelist. They become the person knocking on the door. And saying, that's what Yo. you want. That's because then it's real. So yeah. like, I feel like I've earned, you know, a, a, a download or I've earned a, a new fan or a, a new person who's interested. Just at Popeye's Chicken on Hollywood, like I walk in, doing my thing. She sees the hair. That's the initial billboard. Mm -hmm. Secondly, I have my stuff ready. Well, if you like it, here's my Instagram. Boom. Here's my video. Boom. Yeah. It was made and the transaction was made right then on the spot. Mm -hmm. And this record is when I feel comfortable with saying if someone did not know who I was and wanted to figure out what kind of artist I was, this album, out of all the albums I recorded, this is the top of all the things and genres I can do, but just a and R perfectly from top to bottom. Here's the best, greatest hits, even though it's not a greatest hit. Yeah, yeah. So, so people need to get this album because it's like it all really... new material. But there, you would you, when you play it, you feel like you know the songs already mm -hmm. from the beginning. Okay. I wanted kids and grandparents and parents to like yeah. the same album. I wanted classy folks and ratchet, ratchet folks to love it. And, and the classy in the ratchet and the ratchet and the classy <laughs> yeah. get pulled out of each other in this right. record. Because there's there's parts on this album that are so vulnerable. And uh, one of my friends said, I hate this word, tender. <laughs> That's so stupid. <laughs> Who says that word? I don't like that. Like even on that Silent Night song. Holy infant, so tender. Uh -uh. Tender. <laughs> well, there's a whole app that's made millions called, called tender. tender. I'm just I don't like that. I, I mean, I want the meat to be tender when I'm doing steaks or whatever like that. But I don't <laughs> want people it. using that word to describe my shit. <laughs> tender. But that's you know. But there's moments that maybe someone who's normally like more on the ratchet side finds a vulnerable part yeah. inside of them that they didn't know existed mm -hmm. or maybe there's some conservative that never knew they could turn up and now they like stay mad right. you know? but <laughs> right. that's what this record does it lets people be themselves and find out things about themselves that maybe they didn't even know were there or maybe was buried well i know on the song establish yes 
your lyric states, and I'm going to read it, okay. that some people refer to me as a great disappointment, but none of the mean things they say can take, take away, away this anointing. I'm not bitter. I'm oh, we missed better. a really important part. And I know that you're gagging on my hair. That's why I put it there so you can stare at me. No, mm. I'm not bitter. I'm better. I'm better. I'm better. And you're looking at me all up in your feet, and you know that I'm doing better. And I'm stacking, I'm stacking, I'm stacking up. Ah, ah. <laughs> and he was losing. <laughs> And I want to know, is that like a, 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 a personal testimony? Absolutely. It's my favorite song in the album. Wow. Because yeah, it sums up my life and a lot of other people's lives in a very short way. Mm -hmm. Sometimes testimonies testimonies can be very melodramatic. I mm -hmm. wanted this to be like for context. I was telling um, Terrell, I was like, yo, I don't want this to, it's a story, not my story. Okay. Some people make the things that happen in their life their story. Mm -hmm. At some point, it has to turn into a story that helped you get to the, this person that you are. But don't mm -hmm. let that trauma or that moment become the story. Mm -hmm. Established is it feels good. Um, I was drawn to that. That's why I wanted to ask you about it. It feels good. It just yeah. has a good spirit on it. It's like it's not a gospel song. It's like Chance the Rapper gospel. You know, mm -hmm. like, you don't know what's lifting you up until you listen to it. You're like, wow, I feel good when I hear this song. I feel better after. Yes. Afterwards. Yes. Well, you work with so many artists. I mean, Shaka Khan, Faith Evans, Snoop Dogg. I mean, the, the genres are like all over the place, mm -hmm. but um, the talent is genius level. Thank you. So what do what does working with them, um, how does it uh, affect, impact, influence your own artistry? Mm. Well, uh, it's still surreal to me. Like, even though Faith and I are... You know, I love her. She loves me. We've known each other for years. She's always supported me. I never get familiar with them. Like, I still have so much respect. Mm -hmm. I still get nervous around them, you know, and she'll say, you know, the same thing back about me, you know, but it's just a mutual admiration. Mm -hmm. um, the, the one that caught me off guard the most was the Snoop one, though. I, you couldn't have told me, like, you know, that, that something like that. What happened? I didn't even know I was on his radar. Just him asking me to produce him, like saying, like, I want to sing, or I want to, and then tell me, hey, hey, tell me if it ain't right. Slay, tell me, tell me what you want me to do, man. Is that cool? You need to do what he can. You're like, he'll, he'll let me produce him. He's at a place where he could be like, don't tell me. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I would have to respect yeah, that. You know what I mean? He's Snoop, he's like these yeah. legendary icon, you know, trailblazer. So, but he's always growing. That's what I like about and admire in him as a, as a man and as an entertainer is his ability to always stay relevant. He's yeah. always relevant. Think mm -hmm. about all these decades that he's been here and he's still on top of his game and actually expanding yeah. from there. The Shaka Khan example of, of it, you got to remember, I, I remember hearing Ain't Nobody, you know what I'm saying? And yeah. it'll come on in, in a restaurant to this day and I'll be up in Outbacks or something and be like, I work with her like I, she did my song or I'll see her on The View and she's talking about the song we wrote or I'll be watching The Get Down on Netflix and I'm hearing the song Love in that. the series and it's surreal like mm -hmm. there's no way I'm ever gonna get used to this yeah. Sheila E uh, 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 Missy Elliott mm -hmm. you know like when I wrote a rap and she actually kept it the way I wrote it like Missy Missy yeah it was Whoa. a song of uh, Omarion called Boogie Police mm -hmm. but she kept I couldn't believe it, you know, which made me feel like good. I'm she she should know I'm just her protege. I'm mm -hmm. just, you know, a Michael Prince, Janet Missy protege. That's mm -hmm. exactly what I am. So it just goes to show you that just because you don't know doesn't mean that someone else isn't speaking well of you. Like even right now as we're sitting here or as you're watching this, you guys, somebody is speaking something good about your next move and your destiny that you don't even know about. Just because you don't know doesn't mean that. There's not someone working on your behalf. And we have to keep those thoughts in the mm -hmm. forefront. I didn't know that. Sometimes we get in our way and be like, no one's checking for me. And I feel like no one's noticing. I still I feel like, man, like, man, like, I'm, I'm giving the best possible quality <laughs> music I can. But, you know, but it's like, are you ready for what you're asking for? Mm -hmm. And until you are ready for that, it doesn't mean that you're not talented. It's never a matter of talent. Mm -hmm. It's a matter of the appointed time. And that song established, I say, all of my appointed times, I'm going to wait until my change, either here or here or here comes. Well, when you are on stage doing what I call a master class or vocal gymnastics <laughs> with, <laughs> with, what? What with Layla Hathaway, Shawnees, oh, Lee Andrea Johnson, okay, I want to know 
what what does that feel like? Because <laughs> it's like you guys are having a like we're having a, a conversation. conversation. Is it spirit led? Is it practice? Is it ping pong? Do you guys lose the audience and you're mm-hmm. just there together? What is that? Uh, with Leandria Johnson and myself, it's just that's my sister. There's we didn't grow up together, but we understand each other and get each other in mm-hmm. so many different ways. Mm-hmm. So that's just that intuition between brother and sister. Yeah. Um, with Layla, that's a spiritual thing. That is completely spiritual because we are led as we are on this the stage whenever she did. And I still. <laughs> Like, I still have a mad crush on Layla Hathaway. It's her lips. <laughs> Honestly. <laughs> uh, since, uh, for a long time, I've been crushing on her. And so I, I was already willing and open to, and so to actually see her singing with me and want to sing with me and it, it have allowed me to open for her specifically just to give me that platform. Faith, same way. Like, the ones that really do love me and believe in me, have not just said it with their 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 words, but they actually with their actions followed up. Shanice and myself is a combination of technique, practice, and trust. Mm-hmm. Because with her, it's like, hey, we about to jump off of this cliff. I think I packed a parachute, but I'm not sure. And mm-hmm. she's like, be, but okay. And we do it, and then you see what happens. You okay. know, because when I say practice, I mean like. We're around each other in the studio so much, doing so many takes of a, a certain line or thing. Like that. we're like both computers. Like mm-hmm. she's so fast. Mm-hmm. Like she's like the fastest in the West as far as like putting those layers of vocals. I'm talking about like 28 tracks, 40 tracks of all Shanice, but laying them down like oh, a sewing wow. machine precision, like mm-hmm. super fast. That we've developed, you know, our skills in that way. It's like um, playing racquetball or. Yeah, you know, just sparring with someone. So it depends on 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 the person and the energy of them, mm-hmm. of what's going on when we see that duet. Or Take- Tisha Campbell, um, for example, that's another very fast. She knows what she wants to do. Mm-hmm. She is very involved with the lyrical content. She is a beast on with the pen as well as with voice as well as with you know performing. So, but each one of these ladies have a different way that they approach music. Mm-hmm. And so it's just a testament to the people I've studied, Quincy, uh, David Foster, mm-hmm. um, Jimmy Jam, Terry Lewis, oh, yeah. uh, Teddy Riley. These are all Rodney Jerkins. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I don't think he gets enough due for how yeah, he, he literally he ran. He's like a genius, for, like a prodigy. Just, you know, I, I think people sleep on that era and don't realize how many hits he produced on mm-hmm. a consistent level, particularly with female artists. Uh, another major influence was Rich Harrison as a producer. Okay. Uh, you know, I love the go-go DC uh, sound. And so when you have people like this around you that you're up under and you're listening to, you learn. Brian uh, Brian Morgan, mm-hmm. who uh, SWV, yeah, another mentor of mine. Wow. You know, you so some good people. So that's how I know how to go to each one of these artist and pull the best out of them because I've studied from the best producers Mm -hmm. you know I've I've learned from their tutelage not just the singers or the artists who has inspired your art the most Janet Jackson Janet yeah and what was it about Janet that really influenced you know she wasn't Mike oh I love that she's not Mike you know a lot of the Mike fans you know it seems to me like they try to like discredit the originality that she brought to the table of course they're related so there's going to be certain influences that you're going to have just like myself and my nephew we think a lot alike we're related mm-hmm. musically so we're going to come up with a lot of the same things borrow ideas from each other but no one talks about how much Janet has you know inspired mike the stuff that he you know borrowed from her mm-hmm. you know and i just feel like for her to stand up to her father 17 you know and say i want to really be taken seriously as an artist Mm-hmm. Not just a novelty Jackson or the little kid sister. Yeah. That took a lot for her to stand up to her father or any young person who wants to find their own identity and worth. Mm-hmm. More than just her and what she does. She's a Taurus. I identify with that. Mm-hmm. We know what we want. We're very passionate about what we want. And so just for her to do that so young and take control of her career is similar to what I had to do several times in my career and to stand up to like my own father, like this is what I want to do. This is the way I want to present my music, the way I want to dress. I can identify with that. Gotcha.
Gotcha. So I can see the parallels mm -hmm. of that. It's mm -hmm. not just music. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's the, the, the determination and resilience. Mm -hmm. Well, speaking of your dad, because he was a, a pastor, mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> you said that you had to exit the gospel world just to really, really be yourself. Yeah. I mean, talk about uh, just people smiling and being in that mask mm -hmm. and you having to deal with that, knowing that that's not maybe what they're doing behind your back. Right. How were you able to actually have the strength to make that exit and mm. talk about that uh, transition? It was to the point I knew something had to give. I knew that I could no longer uh, compress myself. I felt like I was ready to explode. There were so many things I wanted to explore and things I wanted to talk about, which I did get to do a little bit through uh, the gospel catalog of what I did. Uh, yeah, as Tone, you know, yeah. it was really eclectic for that genre. I still mm -hmm. don't know of anyone who took those type of risks yet. Mm -hmm. Fashion and musical choices in that genre like that. Mm -hmm. But it still was constrained. Even as liberal as that seemed, I still wasn't able to be completely what I wanted to be. Mm -hmm. um, part of it was that my parents were still living. You know, part of this freedom comes from them passing. It's like the exchange. Wow. You know, I feel more of what they taught me with them gone than them when they were here. Mm -hmm. That's been the constitution and gravity that's kept me in Los Angeles surviving this many years. It's the way I was raised. Mm -hmm. You can't move to Los Angeles, a place called Los Angeles, and expect to get found or find yourself. It's designed for you to get lost. You got to come here knowing what you want. Get what you do. Do what you need to do. Walk through, do your thing, and go on. I've learned that. And you Don't get caught up. Now I've gotten to that point where if the reason why things haven't broken for me the way they have until now is because I can handle it now. Mm -hmm. You know, we know God knows how much we can bear. We always think that means like tests and trials, but it also means blessings. Mm -hmm. You know, well, there's probably so many people that listen to your music who find it difficult to start over. Mm -hmm. Okay, but you have started over, mm -hmm. and you have started over, mm -hmm. and you have started over. Mm -hmm. Can you speak <laughs> over about? And over <laughs> Truly, can you speak about starting over and share any tips on you know how maybe some of your fans can mm -hmm. can do it and and you know make you know, it easier for them? There's a song I had called Start, and it. It was about that starting all over again. And at first it was like almost melancholy or not resentful or sad of having to start all over. But like, dang, just when I had, it seemed like I had it all. Mm -hmm. I had to lose it all. But mm -hmm. you have to lose it all to gain it all. People forget like whatever we lose publicly in front of like everybody. Like you go through public embarrassment or scandal or somebody spills tea on you or somebody like, you know, does something not cool to you. Um, when you lose things behind that publicly, you have to get back double for whatever you lost. Your public embarrassment quantifies double return. So the season I'm in now is because I went through public embarrassment several times, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Just for trying to be myself, trying to find myself. Mm -hmm. But because I didn't die in that and take myself out the way I wanted to October 24, 2010, mm -hmm. but didn't, it does get better. Mm -hmm. You know, I've never seen a five year tornado. <laughs> it comes, yeah. it does its damage, and it's substantial, and it's awful. I'm not making light of that. I'd rather be in an earthquake than a tornado. I'm, I'd, I'd be more scared to death of a tornado. Yeah. But they don't last forever. Mm -hmm. And what got you past that moment of the date that you just mentioned? I thought about if I killed myself, um, what would that do to the legacy of my parents? Secondly... I'm not sure if I would have really been celebrated regardless if I had passed away and they tried to do a story about me. No one would have been able to tell that story right. So why not just live and make sure you direct it or executively produce it to make sure you control the narrative? I can't do that if I take my own life. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I also didn't want people who were religious be like, oh, see, he killed himself because he's out of the will of God or God, you know, first, you know, left him or he left God. So God's mm -hmm. through with him. And they forget these scriptures that say like his mercy is everlasting. You know, he'll be with you always. He'll never leave you nor forsake you. Goodness and mercy followed me all the days of my life. Mm -hmm. It's still following me. Just because I'm doing something you don't understand doesn't mean that God doesn't love me. Right. And he's not with me and his angels aren't around me, mm -hmm. you know. Drop them, drop them uh, <laughs> passages, hey, Pastor. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> 
Pastor Slade. <laughs> but I feel like I am still ministering or pastoring. It's just not limited to faith-based content or church-based talk. Mm -hmm. I'm reaching a broader audience. I've never uh, compromised my faith. You know, he's mm -hmm. still with me. If anything, my relationship with God got stronger by not having parents and by being outcast by the church and being thrown out there to just die. I had to find out what was my relationship with God really based off of. Was it off my parents? Was it just because I was related to them? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I mean? Or do, or do I really know for myself who he is? Uh, not really. Not with two parachutes still living. When both of your parent parachutes are deployed mm -hmm. and you can no longer go to them for advice and that's that, mm -hmm. you're going to find out who God is. Is he either going to draw you to him or is going to turn you away from him? Mm -hmm. I didn't talk to God for two years. Wow. And what was the what was the conversation like the day that you talked back to him? It was in a book called Conversations with God. I love that book. And um, then I saw the movie and it opened me There's up. a movie? There's an actual movie that oh. is even more amazing than the book to me. Oh, I'm not going to uh, that out. I would also say Neil um, Donald Walsh was very important in me finding my connectivity back to God. Um, His Holiness the Dalai Lama was also very influential. A book called The Art of Happiness mm -hmm. uh, really helped me to find. There's books outside of the Bible and speakers and vessels outside of Christian construct that do also have insight to, to life and God and universe. And so just by listening and reading these different books, it opened me up to even to pray again, mm. you know. Because the parts that didn't apply to me or didn't work for me, I just spit out those bones. But it didn't mean that the whole book was bad. Mm -hmm. And it, that's with anything in life. Yeah. You know, you go to a buffet, you may not eat everything that's presented there, but somebody likes it. Mm -hmm. So don't just get rid of the tray because you don't like it. Right. Someone does like what I'm getting. <laughs> I mean, that that yeah. that's for people too. Absolutely. That's, that's true. <laughs> you can pick and choose. Yeah. Oh, you know, I like... You know, yes, yeah. this, uh, on Thursdays because mm -hmm, he's this way, mm -hmm. but on Friday, oh, not so yeah, much. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. You can't pick. Yeah, I see you can't do that. Mm -mm. You know. Yeah, you have to take it all. Mm -hmm. um, what did choosing your, your your truth over your career teach you? Mm. You're gonna lose a lot, and when you, I, I often wish I had a cushion. Like I wish I had had like some type of nest egg. You know, the next time I come into uh, financial windfall. One of the first things I'm going to do is follow the advice of Will Smith. He said to me one night, it was at Zen, he said, treat each quarter, treat each dollar like it's a quarter. Yeah. I was like, what? When you make a dollar, it's really not a dollar. It's only just a quarter. Mm. And I was like, oh, yeah, I wasn't doing that the first time. <laughs> first time I got rich, I just felt like giving to everybody. I felt like I was obligated to just help everybody. And what did you know, that teach you? What did that whole experience teach you? That even good intentions can make you bitter. Mm -hmm. The intention was to help, but it left me very angry because I was taken advantage of, mm -hmm. you know? Then there were some parts I wasn't taken advantage of, I forfeited. Mm -hmm. You know, you got to know the difference. Some things people do still. Some things, sometimes you, you can't really guess that that person would do that particular thing to you. And then there's other situations you forfeited that information. You you gave up that ghost. You set yourself up. You set up. yourself up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I had to learn the distinction between the two. And once I did, I was good. Mm -hmm. Part of that had to deal with like recognizing your ego. The ego is the way you think people think they think of you. Mm -hmm. And that's not always the case. Yeah. So I had to learn that. Once again, reading, uh, getting into nature, um, trying to get out of the studio, like musicians, we stay in the studio, we're indoors more than we are outdoors. I was actually gonna opt for doing this outdoors, but the time was gonna be too late for lighting. But I would have rather, we'll do it We'll do it again mm -hmm. when it's in the daytime, because there's something about when people commune and talk with nature around them, you can really hear what the spirit's saying. Mm -hmm. You can really get a revelation. Like Oprah in the backyard on Super, on Super, Super Soul Sundays. Yeah, There's yeah. something about that, yeah. that open is being connected to the earth you came from. Mm -hmm. Of course it's going to speak to you. Of course yeah. those roots are going to give you some wisdom that, mm -hmm. you know, you can't pull from yourself. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Now, if you could go back uh, to that Lexi interview. Yes. Would you change any, like, would you not do the interview? Yeah, probably I wouldn't have done it because I, I went on there to promote an album. Unspoken at that time. And we never talked about that album. That never came up in the interview. So I would have, you know, I would have, 
I wouldn't have. Of course it did, you can't go back and change it, but if I had known this way, I would have went about it a different way. But that would have only made the process of me getting to where I'm at now take that much longer. Mm -hmm. It was it was one of the moments where it's like, nah, I didn't see this coming. But we can rip the Band-Aid off. Because mm -hmm. at that point, I was like, fuck it. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Like, if this is what you're going to do. This is this. I've never seen you ask this of anybody else. Did you know her personally before yeah. the interview? Uh -huh. Were you guys I got friends? married to one of her songs at my wedding when I was married. Uh, love enough. Wow. So did you feel kind of like ambushed? Or yes. did you? You did? Mm -hmm. How did that go over after the interview? We took selfies, you know, years <laughs> later. Oh, years later. Uh-huh. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Were you hurt by it? Yeah. Because I, mean, I really liked her a lot. I loved her a lot. I just didn't... I thought of anything... Because I remember my bishop was like, at the time, Bishop Norman Wagner called her called, right? and asked her not to air it. And she did anyway. Mm -hmm. So that made me feel like, oh, so even if, okay, so mm -hmm. my, okay, all right. Mm -hmm. What did that teach you just about the industry and people and experience of telling your truth? It has its pros and cons. You know, I'm thankful to her for putting me in, in a position where I just dealt with it. Mm -hmm. But as someone I really like, because the first time I ever heard her sing was on Fred Hammond's song, uh, Grace. And I'd never heard a voice like that. Mm -hmm. So. See, I don't know that much about Lexi Allen. She's a, she's a singer? Yeah, she's a singer. singer. Okay. Mm -hmm. I think, honestly, that interview is what kind of gave, you know, people found out about her because of that interview. We made each other famous. Okay. I didn't know that, that was what was going to happen, mm -hmm. but that's what happened. Okay. Um. Did it become like this big viral sensation because of the content of you just yeah. talking about your sexuality? Yeah, yeah. That's what got me blacklisted. That's why I had to start all over with the whole new brand mm -hmm. because I couldn't make any. And you money. knew immediately that you were blacklisted after that. It was about a month after. You couldn't book anything. No, the ones that I had booked were all canceled. Wow. Mm -hmm. So the way I was living and just as a man providing for myself, mm -hmm. being used to certain amenities as a recording artist. Yeah, of course, like it's like football players, like, no, we don't get salaries. We get windfall chunk money. Mm -hmm. So when you're used to certain, a certain overhead, and yeah, income, like you're you were expecting like, a certain thing. Yeah, like you said, you did shows where you would get 35000 mm -hmm. you had staff of twenty, mm -hmm. and then boom, mm -hmm. you're in, you, you have a, a, a janitor's closet mm -hmm. for a, a, a toilet stall. Wow. With someone taking a shit next to me while I'm changing. Oh, mm. it got real. Mm. I have been in the fucking hog pen. Mm. While they're talking, trying to rebuild myself in that stall, it was just like, I couldn't call my dad. He was dead. I couldn't call my mom. Dead. I couldn't call my grandparents. Dead. Mm. Both sets. Mm. It was just like the church turned it back. Friends, artists that I did beats for, produced, gave money to, paid bills, bought cars for, all turned their backs. All just of from them. this one. And and what what did they have an explanation or they just turned their backs? They didn't want people to think they condoned someone who was being real about their sexuality. You know? The fluidity of it. Mm -hmm. As if it didn't exist in the church to begin with. And so it became a thing of like, um, I felt like these people knew who I was as a person. Yeah. And if you know me that well, you already kind of knowing like, I'm not like one of these kids is doing his own thing. Right. Don't act like you didn't already. So really, know. it's not that you were, it was that you were honest about yes. it. Yes. It wasn't like, come on. Yeah. If you grew up with me, yeah. anybody that knows, like, this is something, nothing new. Mm -hmm. I've always dressed the way I wanted. Mm -hmm. I've always been, I have boyfriends and girlfriends. So mm -hmm. just, they've always known that. Yeah. So, but. When you're hot, you can't just limit yourself to one sex. Mm -hmm. <laughs> or one orientation. It. It's, it's beyond a label. Well, yeah, you said it's about energy for you. It really is. You know? You know, that's how I met my wife. You know, I wasn't expecting to fall in love with her like that. But, you know, whatever it was about her at the time, it, it got me. Mm -hmm. and, and I gave into it and we were married almost five years didn't think about nobody else nice 
that was she was more than enough mm -hmm. <laughs> so i didn't see that coming mm -hmm. but it happened yeah and i what i'm supposed to do now tell the 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 lgbt community oh well i gotta explain myself to you mm -hmm. you know I've, it's the interesting thing about the lgbt community once all of this happened and even me becoming more of beast laid in an authenticity mm -hmm. that's who i get the most homophobia from it's so ironic yeah they're very they can be not in general i don't want to blanket it but yeah most of the the, the shade is from that community the black gay community is kind of like homophobic yeah. even though <laughs> it's because it's not you know it is it's presented the way that people want it to be presented or they're told mm -hmm. it's supposed to be presented mm -hmm. which is either super butch trade or super rupaul drag race it's like you notice they don't mind if it's if it's made like in a satirical way yeah or if it's presented in a you know more masculine way even mm -hmm. if it's a joke or if mm -hmm. it's uh, you're pretending yeah as long as you're giving the perception and when they see someone who is willing to define binary yeah and and be something that cannot be defined that's they're threatened by that because mm -hmm. there's part and part of the threat is i wish i could do that Right. I want to be that free, but mm -hmm. according to what all the guys say that they want, I got to put this role on. Even though in the bedroom, those Timberlands go right up in the air. <laughs> <laughs> Is that not accurate? <laughs> I don't know. I could be wrong. <laughs> oh, I didn't expect that. That was funny though. <laughs> Somebody rocking like a novel. <laughs> well, you tweeted on Monday that you just had an epiphany. Yes. You never forgave your mom for dying. Like you think all this time I've held uh, that part in, even though it wasn't her fault at all. What brought on that epiphany? And did you feel the same way about your father when he passed? The October months is very difficult because that's when she she got diagnosed in September. October, her, her health really started fading. It was like mm -hmm. a two month process she was gone, but she had never been sick before. Mm -hmm. So imagine everything good and then you got two months to deal with your mom deteriorate in front of your face um i was just angry at i felt like the church killed my parents mm. i felt like the saints and church folk at that time not now but right. at that time I felt like they killed, like, it's almost like when Obama came into office, he had black hair with a little bit of seasoning, a little Lowry's, mm -hmm. <laughs> just a little bit of salt. Mm -hmm. When he walked out, he was just like, white Christmas. Yeah, Frederick Douglass. I'm yeah. just, yeah. wait. <laughs> Down in <to> Brazil. <laughs> well, that's what I call myself, so go ahead. <sighs> When I see my grades, I'm like, oh, Harriet Tubman, here she I comes. Love it. <laughs> <laughs> you know about the underground railroad? I do. <laughs> Every couple of weeks. I felt like that's what happened to my parents. I remember when they had black hair. I remember when I first started seeing signs of excessive gray hit my dad mm. in his beard. And all times of night calling about bullshit mm -hmm. that they can handle themselves and time he could have spent with me it was with them mm. you know it, it made me resent that i felt like had they not had that church maybe they'd be around a little bit longer mm. you know being a politician or a preacher preaching one sermon is the equivalent of a 40-hour work week wow that's how much stress is put on the heart mm. preachers die from the stress all yeah. the time i have friends of mine that i grew up with that you know in my same age group that look 30 years older than me mm. just because of the stress of that and I felt like that's I didn't I, I felt angry with her uh, because she prayed for everybody else and seemingly they got healed and then okay why don't those prayers work for her mm. You know, mm -hmm. so it, was, it sucked. Yeah, I was like, she had power. She, everyone needs prayer. They call my mom because she get a prayer through. Mm -hmm. But what the prayers don't work for yourself? It doesn't work for you. Like, mm -hmm. what does that mean? Yeah, 
Just that was hard to reconcile. Mm -hmm. You know, people don't want to have those real conversations about when their parents die, particularly their mom. Mm -hmm. And you start questioning if there is a God. Mm -hmm. How could a God who's so loving allow something so hideous to happen to someone who did so much good to pray and help and pay for and lift up everybody else? Mm -hmm. This is her reward. Mm -hmm. You know, that's how it, it felt. Yeah. As I went on to live, it was the best thing that could have happened for me as the youngest of six boys. Because, you know, I love my mama. Mm -hmm. But how could I ever become a man unless I don't have that parachute anymore? Mm -hmm. I don't have the dad. I don't have the mom. It caused me to grow my own legs and get sea legs because this was a storm. Mm -hmm. This was a storm. Yeah. And some people go through hell. Some people go through a storm in hell. That's me. Wow. wow. Yeah. So I didn't forget her. I was angry. How mm -hmm. could you leave me here? In this big ass world that already seems at the time not to be fucking with me and said that you died because of me. Mm. Was hoping that I killed myself. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Rough. Just it's it's in this industry, you have to have good people around you. You can't look at what these trolls and people are saying because if you take that stuff in, it can destroy your soul. So I found a way to, yeah, use it as a medium to reach the people I need to reach, but it's not so much a part of my identity that I don't have that human touch with friends and people that I know outside of what I'm able to do just love me for who I am. Mm -hmm. That's the blessing. And that's very important, too, because I don't think people necessarily can, they want what they see you doing mm -hmm. so badly mm -hmm. that they don't realize that. The other stuff that they may have in their life is equally as important. Oh, yeah, it is. Just because I'm who I am, it may be seen sooner or magnified more, but it doesn't mean that the same pressure that you're under, I'm not under just at a different altitude, mm -hmm. but it's the same feeling. The only way you're going to actually get to the to the bottom or to the root of a problem, problem is to name it. A lot of us say we feel a certain way, but we haven't named it. What mm -hmm. is that thing that's got you so fucked up? Mm -hmm. Give it a name mm -hmm. because it can no longer just be this ambiguous sadness, ambiguous depression. I don't know why I'm always, no, no, no. It has a name. Mm -hmm. What is that name? And once I was able to tweak that and find and identify, like I didn't forgive her because I was angry at her, even though it wasn't her fault. Now I can move on from that mm -hmm. and let her rest. I hadn't let her really go to sleep because I she can't rest if I haven't forgiven her. Mm -hmm. So that day I really let that go i got resolution just on monday isn't that something mm -hmm. and how long has she been gone 2009 december 20th 2009 she passed mm -hmm. yeah my so dad was 2004 some, so these are some hard months you know oh the holidays October. are weird yeah. you don't want to bother anybody yeah. uh you know they invite you over for holidays and stuff like that and sometimes i go sometimes i don't but i just can't pretend like i'm okay yeah you know and i don't want to be a burden on any particular family and if they still have their parents around i'm probably going to be envious Mm. just what it is when she died what the fuck is mother's day mm. i don't the, you see the advertisements i mean and they overwhelm you with this shit mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. second year the first year you're just in shock but that second year when it really hits them that they're not coming back and then you start seeing these mother's day situations and everyone's tweet i can't even go online during those holidays mm. because it's just too painful well how do you connect with your five brothers well the oldest one passed okay and that was in 97 um but my other brothers i have one brother i'm pretty cool with really close with so he's the one who encouraged me to actually leave san diego and to pursue my career if it hadn't been for him there probably wouldn't have been a be slayed mm -hmm. he saw it in my eyes mm -hmm. he said he calls me tj it's like tj I can tell you're not happy. I can see it in your eyes. Yes, you run in this church, but this is not what you really, really want to do. And yeah. I can see a little piece of your life dying every week that you do this. He told me that. Because you were life. pastoring yes. over the church. And I did not want to. I did not want to. But he's, my brother saw it. And I listened to my big brother. And then by July, I was like, I told, this is what I told the congregation. So we were watching the BET Awards at the time. And Trey Songz did this tribute to Prince. Mm -hmm. Remember that year? Mm -hmm. And I said to the congregation, I says, "Did you guys?" Did you, I said, did you, "Did you guys see Trey Songz performing doing that uh, tribute for Prince?" They're like, yeah. This is over the pulpit. I said, 
did any of you think that I should have been up there? Or should have had a shot at one of them songs? Yeah. It did, so it did cross your mind. Mm -hmm. Okay, I said, now do you think it's fair that I'm here with you guys knowing that that's where I'm supposed to be? In my heart, I know that's where I'm supposed to be. They reluctantly said yes. Mm -hmm. But they knew, like, you can't hold something like this inside of me to one city, mm -hmm. to one geographical location, mm -hmm. you know? You can't hold that to one genre. You can't hold that to one race. Right. That thing is supposed to be shining so that the whole world can see it, you know? Well, how dope of your brother to tap into that and bring it out and give you, you know, the strength, the little extra push that you needed to go out and be you. Mm -hmm. It was it was the catalyst. Mm -hmm. Like whenever we do the biopic, cause mm -hmm. it, and I'm gonna be alive to see it through, just like New Edition and everybody else. You know? Bobby Brown. Bobby Brown, you know, <laughs> yeah. because some don't live to see their biopics. Yeah, that's true. Well, I'm at the end of my V Slade lightning round. No, the no, whip no, call. No, no. no, we 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 got <laughs> we got a lightning round and the lightning round. You just I like pick, lightning. You just, lightning bolts. You just pick Doing one or the, the other. You just pick one or the, the other. <laughs> all right, all right, okay, okay. One or the other. One or no the one other. between. James Brown or Jackie Wilson. James Brown. Karen Carpenter or Karen Clark Sheard. Karen Carpenter. Mm. The first song you ever heard was Walter Hawkins' I Won't Be Satisfied. Can you sing the chorus? I won't be satisfied till I see my Jesus. No, 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 no. See my Jesus breaking through the clouds. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Feel like I had a B Slade concert. All right. <laughs> Favorite song on the Janet Jackson Rhythm Nation 1814 album. Rhythm Nation. Favorite scripture? Psalms 27. Favorite all-time song by another artist? Favorite all-time song by another artist would be... God, it's so hard. I'm going to go with Billy Joel, I Love You Just The Way You Are. In the studio or on the stage? Studio. Early mornings or late nights? Late nights. Favorite curse word? Fuckaroo. <laughs> Guilty pleasure? I have to answer that. <laughs> I mean, it could be Oreos. You don't have oh, okay, to. Okay, okay, okay. Some of that shit. Um, Guilty pleasure. Okay, okay. String cheese, Ritz crackers, and peanut butter. Okay, see, you was going somewhere else. Yeah. <laughs> Bring it on back. Yeah. Be slave. Okay. Okay. I was trying to be sexy. <laughs> Describe your experience working on the following albums with the following artists in one word. Okay. Tisha Campbell, still here. Fast. Sheila E. Fiesta. Fierce. Elijah Blake, I just I just wanna. And Shadows and Diamonds. Thank, well, that's not one word, but thank you. Mm. Faith Evans Paradise. Um, alarming? <laughs> <laughs> it was. Shaka Khan, I Love Myself. Riveting. Snoop Dogg, words are few. Hmm. Honest. Shanice, gotta blame me and we can and we can fly. Gotta blame me. Mm. Numb. Okay, finally, fill in the blank. I want people to know that B Slade is hilarious. Hilarious. Yeah. I'm not as I was told today. I was they thought I was super serious, and other people kind of agree, but I'm not. Not, not at all. all. <laughs> not, at not at all. all. Anybody knows me? I'm, I'm a clown. And and finally, you know, just let everybody know about the amazing projects that Terrell said that you got coming up in, oh the, in addition God. to your album and where people can download it. Okay. And plug yourself, please. Okay, the new Elijah Blake album, Audioology, the first track, Occupied. Um, Shaka Khan, um, I love it myself. That's on iTunes right now. Uh, Tisha Campbell's still here. 
uh, Lazy Bitch, Shanice, Gotta Blame Me, uh, God, uh, Cheryl Fortune, uh, Figure It Out, and who else am I working on? There's just so much. Snoop Dogg, Words Are Few, the video's about to drop. Uh, then my own album, the self-titled album is out, and you can follow me on all social media at B-S-L-A-D-E now. Follow me now. Follow me now. B-S-L-A-D-E now. Follow me now. Twitter, Snapchat, it's Instagram. That's my website. Um, Be Slate Grooming. Be Slate Grooming. You got, you got a whole beard got a thing. Whole beard thing going on. So it's not just for black beards. It's for all beards. Um, I think that's about it. I'm going on tour. So I'm getting ready to rehearse for the tour. So hopefully we'll be ready to be up and running by, you know, January or so. And where are you going on tour? Um, Atlanta, uh, New York, uh, Florida, uh, Huntsville, Shreveport, nice. Phoenix, Houston, Dallas, Chicago, Detroit, yeah. uh, Philly. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Well, the only other thing. Japan. Oh. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. That's why I asked. Studio Q Show. Now you know.